Hi, I'm Jesse McCollum, Brain Ambassador for Everlast Welders. What we're going to go over today is if you're starting out with aluminum, there's three things you're going to have to learn. Number one, how to fix a puddle when you dip your tungsten into it, how to fix your tungsten and the plate when you dip your filler rod to the tungsten, and how to nail your restarts. Let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna start out with, we're gonna be running a nice bead, going along nice and smooth, and then let's say I sneeze, my arm slips, the chair rolls, and I jam my tungsten down into the weld puddle. This will happen because with, with aluminum especially, you're running a lot shorter arc gap than you do with some other processes, so this is very prone to happen. Okay, so here you can see after we slipped, this little divot here is actually tungsten that has broken off inside of our weld puddle. In order to continue, we need to get that out. Because if we light up over this, it's gonna float to the surface and it's gonna leave a big defect in our finished puddle. All right, now that we have our plate clamped down, we've got our grinder with a cutoff wheel, safety glasses on, let's get that little piece of tungsten out. Now the way you can tell that you've got all the tungsten out is that aluminum doesn't spark. So when you're in there cutting, you'll see you're gonna start throwing sparks and then once you get it all out, no more sparks, you're ready to get back to welding. So now we got a fresh tip back on our tungsten. Let's put it in the torch, try this run over again. Okay, you can see where we had our cutoff wheel in there getting that piece of tungsten out of our weld pool. So we're gonna start up the torch a little bit ahead of uh, the back side of that cutoff wheel mark, work back to tie everything in, and then start running our bead again. Okay, you can see here, we had a nice clean restart, maybe had a little junk float up from using that cutoff wheel. Nice tie in, start the run again, good as new. So moving along now, with aluminum, you generally have to use a lot more filler rod than you do with steel or stainless steel. So one of the issues you can run into is actually jamming your filler rod into your tungsten. So let's start a run, see what that looks like on the arc shot and what we have to do to correct it. Let's look at the tungsten and the plate. You can see the filler rod really jumped to the tungsten and made a huge ball of aluminum on there. We also have some sitting on the plate. We left a little bit of a crater because we pulled off so fast. Usually kind of scares you, so you'll have a tendency to do that. When you're dealing with this, it is absolutely mandatory that you cut off that piece of tungsten, break it off, put a new point on, and start over. You cannot work through this. What you're gonna do is leave a bunch of sooting and contamination in the weld pool and it's gonna look terrible. Now we've got a fresh piece of tungsten back in the torch. Take a look at the plate. It's got a little bit of a black sooting on there. That's just on the surface. We're gonna take some acetone on a cloth, wipe it off and we can get restarted. Okay, you can see we've got a little more etching on the restart than I typically like. But what we do is you, you start out, you back step, once you initiate the arc and kind of let that cleaning action sit there, clean up some of that junk first and then start running. So you're going to have a little more etching on these restarts, but it helps you get a nice clean bead. So here we have the finished product. You can see right here is where we had our, our dip. We actually started up the arc a little ahead, backtrack, let that etching sit there and clean out the weld and then start it. So we have a little more etching on our, our start than we typically like but it's nice and clean, there's no pepper. That's a good restart. Okay, now that we've gone over the different dips, let's talk about restarts. With aluminum, like I said earlier, you're using a lot more filler rod than with your steel and stainless. So you'll have a shorter run that you think you have enough filler rod and it's inevitable that you'll, you'll run out. So you have to get good at restarts. So let's run a little pass here, run out of filler rod, and do a nice restart. We've just finished our first run, we ran out of filler, we need to make a restart. So I'm gonna show you an improper restart first, continue the run, and then show you a proper restart. So let's go back to the plate, and we'll show you an improper restart. So one of the things I typically see people do is they'll start right here and just keep on running. And so let's do that. We're gonna start right here on the toe of the weld, make a dip, and just start running, and then we'll stop again, and we'll see the difference between an improper and a proper restart. So what we have here, we started our restart way far out on the toe and tried to melt it back. We didn't get back to our last, our last dab. So what we have here is a low spot. And generally what we'll see 
on a coolant tank or a reservoir is that will be a leak. Now that we've seen how not to do a restart, I'm gonna show you how I do mine to get a nice tight tie-in. On that last restart, we started right here on the edge of the weld. I just formed my puddle, trying to catch that divot and then started running. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna start about the same place, but I'm going to move back, melt in this, this dab again, and then start. So we fill in that crater, we don't have a leak there and we'll have a nice tight tie-in. All right, so now I've shown you how to do a proper restart. Let's take a closer look, see the differences between the two. We're actually gonna flip the plate over here in a second and see the backside as well. Okay, so you see here on the front side, we do have that little low spot on the, uh, the bad tie-in. Right here, that's our proper tie-in. It's hard to tell the difference from the top side, but let's flip it over and look at the back where we can really see where we're gonna have an issue. So here we have our, our first tie-in where we started a little too far out and then didn't walk back. So you can see here, both sides of the plate are very clear. We're gonna have a hole there that is going to leak. Here is our proper tie-in. You can see both sides of the plate caught nice. They're both melted in. And we've got good penetration the rest of the way out. So this is what you wanna do. You wanna start on the front edge of that stop, back up, remelt that dab in, and then start moving forward. Now that we've gone over a couple common mistakes people make while welding aluminum, hopefully you can take this information and improve your welds. I'm Jesse McCollum, brand ambassador for Everlast Welders. You can follow me on Instagram at McCollum.WeldFab. Remember, weld mean, weld green.